Another week, another mob episode. And as much praise as this episode had, I will admit there was some controversy. Yep, Mob Psycho might be cancelled, guys. Very serious. The faces looked weird. Deeply upset. Mob has never been a show to go off model, so big L. And honestly, none of these Sakuka tards know what they're talking about, so... Sorry, Kevin, this is a 1 out of 10 episode, and it only gets a 1 because of the shirtless Reagan scene, alright, mate? Okay, no, jokes aside. Um, This is a hard one to analyse, like, in a short 8-minute form, because you know I like to focus on the best bits of animation in an episode, and when you have a staff list like this and the episode is consistently moving like this, that's a hard task. So I'll try and make it simple for you and for myself. Let's break this down into car scene, forest scene, Illuminati, alien summoning scene, and whatever you want to describe this as. So the car scene. Now, honestly, when I hear those words, anime car scene, I think of something that goes along the lines of close up of character talking with lip flaps, close up of driver talking, then switch back to the other character, then switch to an outside shot of car, something, you know, quite generic and forgettable, but Mob's team is built different. Now with the exception of the very first cut, there isn't a single outside shot, the camera like sits in the car at all times. Of course, very deliberate, it's clear the director, Mr. Go, wants to convey that confined and sort of cramped feeling when you're in a car full of people. And again, eliminating any outside perspectives, it's one neat way to achieve that. What's more interesting though is that the camera, despite being limited to such a small space, the composition still remains fresh, and again have to shout out Go for that. In one cut, the dialogue animation is delivered through a reflection on the window, then in the next, the camera's behind the mirror. It's a fun angle and also works in blocking everything else out and drawing the audience's eye to our boy Reagan. Then the icing on top of all that is the animation. Wish I had names to pin to all these scenes, but for now, I'll stick to the classic artist unknown. Anyway, what I love is just how subtle it all is. Now let's flick back again and this time focus on Kurata. Notice the small actions, the head tilt to the side, animating her lashes and some hand animation, a very complicated part of the body to draw as any artist will know. And you know what? The animator didn't even need to do any of that. Could have just gone with the still shot and left it there. Certainly would have saved themselves time and effort, but they didn't. And as a result, it makes for a much more lively cut. And I think that goes for this whole scene and especially the next one. So yeah, forest time. First off, gotta give a shout out to the art director, not just for this part, but I, the episode in general. Really great color design and nothing better than some hand painted backgrounds and especially ones painted as well as these. But switching back, there are two standout parts. The first part is the scene with Kurata as her frustration comes out over her friends apparently lying to her. Now, Go's displayed before his ability to bring out the feelings of a character in a poignant way. It's been a feature of his animation for years and of no surprise it was carried over when he began directing. And of course, the classic Mob Episode 5 is a great example of that. Outside of his storyboard, placing everyone else above and her below, I guess somewhat of a visual representation of how she sees herself, it's the animation that brings it all together. Now, once again, I'm unsure who it is, but their sharp drawings, rough expressions, and of course, animation really match the vocal performance by Atsumi Tanazaki. But even without dialogue, the confusion of those around her is clear through the character acting alone, especially Inukawa, the way he keeps looking around, constantly blinking. Overall, it's, it's excellent characterization. Now, most times things on the animation side would calm down from there and probably ramp up again for the episode's climax. But with Go, he seems to be persistent in just like having this episode move at all times. And he got quite a skilled animator to have a hand in that, being Julian Bentley. Now, compared to many of the other names in this episode, Bentley's time in the industry is definitely a lot less, but his output here certainly tricks you into thinking he's been around for ages. I've mentioned before in other videos that animating characters moving in and out of the camera brings a bit of a challenge because you especially have to pay attention to the consistency and volume to the drawings. But what makes this scene all the more harder and as a result impressive is the high angle it's framed at. Then to top it off, he animates up to seven characters 
and they're all quite animated at that. Just very dense animation wise and I think that's a nice way to summarise his work in this episode. And going into the next cut I guess provides some more proof of that. The characters don't just all like casually walk across the bridge at the same pace, but it's rather an organic sequence in terms of how everyone's actions are handled, such as having Kurata run up and hit Kijibayashi as he's distracted by the birds, with Inukawa in the back signalling for her to hold up. It just isn't common to see this type of character animation in TV anime, but then again everything about this series has always gone against industry norms. There's also the integration of animals into the scene which while again adds to the difficulty, animating a squirrel and human are two different things but it undoubtedly adds an extra feeling of life to this environment. Also just notice he animated Kijibayashi like slipping over, really amazing just how much detail there is here. Mob is indeed cinema. Now moving on to alien summoning scene, we probably get the best showcase of the team's stylistic quirks as Go leaves a lot of stuff untouched. The first example and person I would like to highlight is Kai Ikarashi. According to him he was just helping out so it was only a single cut, but he does bring quite a unique take to Reagan. You can see his usual stylized way of drawing necks that leans to straights rather than curves and well, I guess a more pointed type overall. I mean he is a trigger animator so of course it's stylized. Shading for the skin is likewise left out and the tips of the hair strands are sort of rounded off. Fun take? Very cool. The animator for the next cut of Kurita likewise has a unique touch. It's a much softer take on this character and gives a cute appeal. There's also this part that has the animator completely ditch shading altogether and adds a rim light effect created by adding highlights directly to the line work rather than shading an area out. It's likewise a stylish spin, harmonizes perfectly with the backgrounds. Then to finish it off, it is good old Chris, or Yen. I missed out on talking about his work on Chainsaw Man a couple of weeks back, so you know, I'm glad I found an excuse to bring him up. His take on Mob instantly stands out for me. I, I think it's the way he draws the hair, the bangs sit down just on his eye line. Typically they are just like a bit up and the hair is less segmented into defined parts, which gives a slightly looser and, and natural feel. But yeah, enough about Mob's bowl cut. Uh, Chris's final part is Mob extends his hand out. The nuanced touch to Kurata's facial expressions and body language, it's, it's very lifelike and also an interesting contrast to earlier. Before we had this rougher feeling to the drawings and animation, whereas for this major point for Kurata, it's soft and more delicate. Also great use of the team's talents by Go. But you know I've talked a lot about cool powers, however one I've recently become accustomed to is Nord v uh, yeah, as I was saying, if you're like me, there's a lot of Japanese media off limits to dirty gaijin that live in kangaroo land. However, with a click of a button that changes and I can have access to an endless stream of anime cat girls. Like literally, it's the easiest program I've ever used and also comes with a bunch of other benefits like protection from malicious ads and websites and yeah, a couple of other helpful things. Oh yeah, what else was I meant to say? Oh yeah, um, can be used on up to 6 devices per account and there's a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. So to get an exclusive deal on a 2 year plan, plus 4 bonus months free, go over to nordvpn.com slash forgotten relics. So finally, the alien part. My first thought when I saw this was like, oh this looks like Space Dandy, which was another studio bonus production and a very well animated one at that if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about. But yeah, it turns out wasn't the only one that felt that way. I think why it was like reminiscent of Dandy for many people is because that show just like threw so much weird alien tech and worlds at you and that would often never appear again. And that's pretty much the same thing here. It's just like shot after shot of unique settings and designs. The writing of these gags likewise wouldn't feel out of place in that show. Unsure if it's deliberate coincidence or just like some inspo coming through. It, it's cool either way. And what's really crazy is that like the Sakuga train does not stop. Like you would think by this point it does, especially since how like low key this content is, it's literally just a gag. But yeah, it just com continues to go on. For one, you got Vincent Chansard making his second appearance on this season. And I know I've used the word detailed and dense already, but there's just no better way to describe these layouts. I really encourage anyone to just like jump on the Boru and, and just go through this thing cut by cut and 
Just see how much he's packed in these few seconds. I swear I could literally just make a whole video on just this part. But moving on from Charnsard, a bit before him, we had another surprising return, and that being the GOAT himself, Yuki Hayashi. We recently went over his spectacular action work in episode 6. Of course, it's nothing as wild as his work on that episode, but his smooth background work makes for a great contribution. And after him, a much younger and newer name that Go brought on, Agen just keeps the energy going, especially with his dynamic camera work. A lot of depth as well to the way he's just like constructed all this. So overall thoughts are Go did it again. And just a little bit of backstory on just why it was so special to have him return. Go was this young talent who just like shot up out of nowhere. He entered the industry at just 21 and eventually went on to sort of put together some of the top episodes in TV anime for a while there. However, in 2018, his streak sort of stopped. Being from a country that has mandatory military service, Taiwan, he was called up and had to leave Japan. And for a while there, it was uncertain whether he would return to the industry ever again, let alone participate on Mob Psycho. So it was definitely a welcome surprise to have him back one last time before this amazing series slowly wraps up. And in Go tradition, he made it one to remember. And I think that also equally goes for the skilled animators, both young and old, that he always brings on board to execute his ambitious goals. He also got Zhong back, who likewise disappeared from TV anime and has a tradition of popping up on Go episodes. But with that final note though, I will also wrap things up too. Thank you for watching and also something a little different, wanted to shout out the Naruto vs Ichigo project. The team is currently trying to reach £100,000 to complete it. It's quite a big task, so if you could check them out over on Patreon, which the link to will be in the description and help them out, the team would definitely appreciate it. And also of course, thank you to my patrons who help support the channel. But with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.